All right, today we are going to talk about the circle of fifths. And I know this is something that we use in class quite a bit already, um, but I think that sometimes we understand what it looks like. We can identify it as a symbol, but we don't understand how it works. And so today we're going to go through some of the uses for it, how you can use it to your advantage as a musician. And the most important thing I want you to walk away with today is that the circle of fifths is a way of organizing information that we already know. Um, and so it reminds me, and I like to think about it um, in terms of another tool that is used to organize information, the periodic table. So many of you are probably very familiar with this. Some of you haven't taken chemistry yet and we'll learn about it in the future. Um, but the periodic table is a way of organizing elements that have already been discovered. We already know about them and their information. And it's just a way of making it easier to um, see the relationships between them, right? Um, so for example, before we made the periodic table, carbon had already been discovered. We knew the atomic weight. We knew all of the character, uh, many of the characteristics of it. Um, and so it, it's not that looking at this helps you discover elements. They were already discovered, and this is a way of organizing them. So the periodic table works in the same way. And probably the first question you're asking, uh, since it's called the circle of fifths, you might be asking, what is a fifth? That's a great question. Um, the technical music definition is that a fifth is seven half steps, two notes that are seven half steps apart. So um, if we were to start with a C on the keyboard, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That makes something called a perfect fifth. C to G is a perfect fifth. I have that written over here for those of you who read treble clef. Um, but there is an easier way for string players to figure out fifths. You may have heard before that violin, viola, and cello are all based or built upon perfect fifths. That means each of your strings is one fifth apart from the lower string, uh, for from the string next to it. And that makes it a little bit easier for us to identify our fifths. So you can take any starting pitch and just move up to the same finger on the next highest string. And that is one fifth higher for violin, viola, and cello. I'll get to bass in a second. Let's take this C, for example. Uh, for cello and viola, it's pretty easy. You have an open C string. So the next open string is G. So C to G is one fifth, a perfect fifth. <clears throat> for violins, you, and you have to get a little bit more creative with it. I would maybe think of my three fingers on the G string. That note is called C. And if I go to the next string, my D string, and play three fingers, that note is G. So it's just sh shifting over a string, and that tells you a perfect fifth. Now, bass, you have to think about this a little bit backwards. So for bass, um, you're going to go down a string with the same finger. So two fingers on A is C. And if you go down to the E string with two fingers, that gives you the G. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Um, you can kind of go through that in your head and think about if you keep the same finger and go to the next higher string or lower if you're bass, what is that note? That is a perfect fifth higher. And I think you'll start to see some of those relationships um, on the next slide here. So here's our circle of fifths. It starts with C. That's the key with no sharps or flats. And as we go around, all of this note should be a fifth higher. We just learned on the last slide a fifth above G is is a uh, fifth above C is G. So that is correct. Um, so then we can check to see if this next one is right. G to D. So in your head, take a minute to say, is that does that seem like it's one fifth higher, right? And if you're a violin, viola, or cello, we all have open G strings. The next highest string is a D. It makes sense that that's a perfect fifth. Um, and with bass. Um, <clears throat> Again, you, uh, you can start with your open, actually you have an open G string, and then go down, and that's your D. So that is a perfect fifth. So this entire, uh, as you go clockwise, is being built upon perfect fifths, okay? Gets a little weird over here when you get to the sharps and flats, but if you figured that out, if you did the fingering for it, you would see it does work out the same way. Now you'll notice as we go around the circle of fifths, I said we start with the key of C, which is no sharps, no flats. As you go clockwise, every... Uh, next key has one more sharp added to it. So we start with no sharps, go to one, go to two, three, four, five, six, seven. We run out of sharps. So at that point, there aren't any more sharps to add, right? Um, and it does follow that order of sharps that we already learned. F, C, G, D, A, E, B. So you can use that order of sharps um, that we've already learned to help you figure out the key signature. 
If you go counterclockwise the other way, we add one flat to every key signature. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, and they didn't write the seven, but normally there is one, uh, the key of C flat. This, this particular circle of fifths doesn't show it, but normally it would. Um, and so then we run out of flats and can't do that anymore. Okay, so it's a way of showing uh, the keys that add sharps and the keys that add flats. So now let's take a look at what this can be useful for. There's a lot of good uses for the circle of fifths. And the first is to organize key signatures, right? So it, it gives us a way of, of showing it um, incrementally, like I just went through on the last slide, where you're adding sharps or um, <clears throat> adding flats. And it shows the relationships between major and minor keys. Now, we haven't talked about minor keys too much, but every um, major key signature has something called a relative minor. That means a minor key that shares the same key signature. Uh, we'll talk about this more in another video, but the trick to finding the relative minor is that it's the sixth note of that scale. So if you think about the scale of C major, the sixth note in the key of C, C, D, E, F, G, A, that means the key of A minor is the relative minor to C major. Um, and so these are all the minor keys that share the same key signature. So uh, just another example, the key of B flat has B flat and E flat. The key of G minor also has B flat and E flat. And that'll be important later on as well. And another thing that is important, another way that you can use the circle of fifths is that it helps you to identify chords within uh, each key. Sorry, I know you can't see that because that bar came up. I'll stop moving my mouse so you can see it. it helps you identify chords in each key. Again, this is something we'll talk about um, in a future video, but each key um, has chords that um, tend to be used more often than other chords, um, especially in pop music, you'll hear it a lot. And when you look at the circle of fifths, the two chords or keys surrounding that key that you're in are the ones that tend to be used quite a bit. So in the key of C, you hear a lot of uh, G chords and a lot of F chords. Okay, in the key of A, you'll hear a lot of D chords and a lot of E chords. And so it's a good tool if you're writing music to go look at the circle of fifths and say, which, which uh, chords could I pick that would be really complementary and sound well with the key that I'm in? One more thing I wanted to point out about the circle of fifths, and let me go back a slide. Um, is at the bottom, we do have some of these uh, keys that have two different key signatures. This is where we get into something called enharmonic spelling. Enharmonic spelling means it's the same, uh, it sounds the same, you can just spell it in two different ways. It's kind of like how we have words in English that um, sound the same but are spelled differently and they have different meanings. Um, in this case, they're spelled differently, they look different on the staff, but when you play them and hear them, they sound the same. Um, so you can think about how F sharp and G flat on your instrument have the same fingering. If I went back to the keyboard, F sharp and G flat share a key. Um, and so those enharmonic spellings are just two different ways of looking at the same scale. And like I said, there normally are three scales that fall into this category. B is normally, uh, normally also has C flat, everything flat. For some reason, this particular circle of fifths doesn't show it in that way. And so if I were to ask you to play a D flat scale, you could choose to think about it like a C sharp scale. It's however you want to think about it, and it will come out sounding the same way. Um, so I think that was it here. Yeah, those are all the uses that we're going to look at for now. There's lots of other things that you can do with the circle of fists, but those are the basic ideas. And like I said, we're going to explore a little bit more about the minor keys and building chords later. So it's good to know that the circle of fifths is useful for that when we get to those lessons. So thanks for watching. There's going to be a short little quiz on the Google Classroom and let me know if you have any questions.